It's the 27th of April today, and the apiary is a buzz. We're about 11 o'clock, I guess, maybe closer to noon. Uh, I think we're looking at 10 degrees or a little more right now. A high of uh, 17, I think, today. It's one of the warmest days we've had here so far, and there's not a lot of wind, which is nice. So you can get a warm day, but uh, boy, if you got a stiff wind, it's not warm at all. The sun is hot. I'm actually in my shorts today. And uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be a wise decision. I've already been nailed the back of the leg once. I haven't even touched the bees. So we'll see. Maybe they're going to be too cranky for shorts. What I need to know today is just how they're getting along on feed stores. How they're getting along on the patties. And uh, maybe I'm going to have to add some feed frames, maybe some sugar cakes, uh, keep them going. I didn't buy a lot of syrup this year. I'm kind of uh, questioning my wisdom there. I only bought about two liters per hive and they've taken most of that. They've taken almost all of it. There's not much left. Uh, so I don't know if maybe I should have bought more. The pollen feeder over there is not abandoned, but it's kind of uh, quiet. I think they found some some uh, early pollen here in the poplars and the willows. These hives are going to be turning around here right away because we're having, uh, by my math at least, we should be having emergence now. And as we go go further, we should be having a buildup. And some of these colonies look really good. So we'll try and uh, show you some stuff that's interesting here today. Thanks for watching. This is a nice little nuke that uh, overwintered. They seem to be doing good. It's always nice to see when they eat the patty. Uh, you know, other than the obvious, that really does indicate that they're brooding. They don't store this stuff. So they're, they're feeding it to the young'uns. I've got my Apoar strip in here. And I just want to see that they have feed stores here. I'm really going to try to be not very intrusive. I can feel it's heavy, so that tells me right there they're fine. They are, they are working on it. So I see that they've got some syrup here in it, some fresh syrup. So that's been brought in recently into the comb. I see some pollen pants here, not not a very good load, but I see it there. So that's good. I don't know if that's the supplement or natural pollen though. I checked a few entrances, I don't see a lot of pollen pants going in. I'm gonna get another patty for these ladies. And then we'll leave them alone. This is my first time working my uh, hives that are on these new stands. I have a box to sit on here, but I'm going to try this standing up just to see how it feels. So far, it feels great. So here again, we have good patty consumption. So we'll get another patty on here. I'll smoke them a little bit.
I've marked with a Q indicating I might want to use these as pain breeders just because they're strong they seem to be doing well now you look at the black hole green dot up against another frame. So now I want the queen encapsulated between these two frames. Okay. She's in the middle there. And she is right now. She might not be for long. Check the rest of these frames. I wish I could show you this, but I'm sure you wouldn't see it. It's a, a little bee that's just emerged, and she is. She's so hairy. Their eyes are hairy. They're so hairy. She's pale, and she's small. And there's a big fat drone walking around in there. That I don't get. Oh, there's a queen. Well, not a big. Well, she's black. See, the, there's a queen and a bunch of workers in there. The workers are not a problem because when I push that up, the workers can escape for a moment. No idea what you can see. Let that paint dry a bit. The one-handed queen catcher from Man Lake. Are cheaper versions of that type of tool. However, I know people who have bought the cheaper version and it has some deficiencies. I highly recommend you, if you want one of those, buy the man like one. Alright, so open the door, you know, give her a little shake so she's down at the bottom. Open the door. She's, she's wanting to fly. Go down in the thing. She's way down over there. She's lost. Okay, this is a number three on it. I know I have some non beekeeper friends who watch videos. So, 
That's why I try to think of questions that they might have as I look. She's laying very well. She's got eggs all down through here, open brood there, and some capped in that area. I think they're emerging because she's uh, she's laid that up already again. I see some fairly young bees in here as well. That's nice. I don't see scads of old bees. So a lot of the bees in here are replacements. That's really good to see. This colony is past the dwindle and is rebuilding. The dwindle, the spring dwindle. Colonies don't dwindle very much over winter. They just kind of hang out. They don't do much at all. You just put everything on hold and survive. Spring hits. And they start creating. Uh, she starts laying, and they start making more brood, feeding that brood, and tending that brood. That starts to put. Uh, put the age on the old bees. That starts that clock. And so the old bees start to die off and the colony will shrink. It is the hope that the colony will begin to rebound before the shrinkage gets to zero. Some of those small colonies you see over there getting pretty close to that critical critical mass mark that one number three as well that might be a stretch but there's something to work with here there she is push right up there on her because that pad is so soft that she doesn't get hurt. It almost doesn't hold it up there tight enough to push that pan onto her. Okay, let's see if we can get her in there. stands by the way. Okay, As I can 
C20 this is a 19 it should be green it off over time. Let her sit. Okay, what do you think? Is she ready? I'll just tap it so she falls down. And then tip it over. Undo the door. I hate it when they fly. Keep an eye on them. Marked with a, a Q for queen breeder and it says four. Yeah, that's what we're gonna see. So nothing too exciting today. Went through a few colonies, saw a few really good ones. Saw quite a few, quite a few decent ones, and a few really not good ones at all. I still think there's a lot to work with out here. So we got that one colony here. Double there. I think it's plenty early to be adding a double. But it is an insulated box, so that'll help. I have to keep smoking the microphone. They seem to take exception to it. They either love it or they hate it. I think they hate it because they get in there and they double over like they're trying to sting it. I have lots and lots of feed here, so that second box is actually pretty much all feed. They can eat that, and they can clean it out for place to, for her to lay. It's insulated, so it should help keep them warm. They had brood on eight frames in there. <clears throat> and she had laid up an entire frame of drones. So they're feeling good, they got energy. Drones means they got energy, they've got momentum. going well. So hopefully I didn't mess it up by adding that, but I think it's okay. If we don't get any real cold weather, it won't turn sour on me. It looks like most of them have uh, enough feed. There's feed frames in almost everything. I sort some around just because I think it'd be better, but who knows? Maybe it won't. Maybe the bees wouldn't think it's better. All I can do is what I think I can do, eh? I sure love the hive stands. Just that extra six inches up, boy, that makes all the difference in the world. I think uh, in the interest of saving, that's a, a good investment. For the number I'd need, you know, I'm not planning to run that many colonies. Maybe 200 tops. So that means I need 50 of those hive stands. That's not, that's not that many. I can build a few each year spread the cost so. as always she's gonna sting me she's sure giving me crap over something as always stay well stay home and have fun